Hi, I just wanted to do a quick video today about a two-stroke engine and try and explain to everyone what exactly it does and how it works. So I'm on the website now, I'm just going to click on the animated two-stroke engine and hopefully in a moment it should load up and I can show you guys all the different components and how they all work together. Okay, the model's loaded up now and as you can see it's already in action. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and pause it a moment. Click on this button here. Okay, and I've paused it. And as you can see, the model itself is at the moment just in the explosion or the ignition phase, which means it's just about to start its power stroke. The piston's just about to go down. Let me just see if I can slow this down a second to show you guys exactly what's happening. There you go, okay. Once it gets to bottom dead center, I'll just pause it here. Right, what we're looking at now is a small two-stroke engine or inside a small two-stroke engine. I say small because engines like this will be used for things like motorbikes or outboard motors or maybe little mopeds, things like that, even a lawnmower. But you will not see these types of engine used for larger use with one exception. You will see two-stroke engines for ships and we'll get to that a bit later on. So what exactly is happening here? Right, let's zoom in, we'll just have a quick look a second. We can see here we've got a spark plug at the top. We've got an internal combustion space here inside the cylinder liner. We've got an exhaust gas manifold or a discharge port here, also called an exhaust port. And we've got a inlet port here. This is what we call a charge air inlet port. That's this area. And you can also see in fact, if we just play it a second, as the piston goes back up, as the piston moves up, it uncovers this area here, which is actually a valve. It's called a reed valve, but it's similar to a non-return valve. And what will happen is the air will come in. So the piston's moved up, it's uncovered the valve, the air will come in here, and it will go into the whole crankcase area here and fill it up with air. And you can also see here up this pipe, this connects to the piston and currently that's covered. So keep that in your mind for a moment because now what we'll do is talk through how the whole thing's working. Now the piston's going up, it reaches almost top dead center and what happens next is there's a spark from the spark plug and this is going to ignite the petrol or gasoline air mixture that's within this space. And once that's been ignited, you'll get a explosion or a controlled explosion and the power stroke will begin. The power stroke is where the piston begins to move down. The power stroke is effectively where you're getting the useful work out. Now as the pistons move down, you can see here it's uncovered the exhaust port. So it's gone down, it's uncovered the exhaust port. At this point, exhaust gas will begin to escape. So the pressure is suddenly going to drop. Whereas initially we had a high pressure and low volume, the volume is increasing and the pressure is reducing and the exhaust gas now begins to escape out of this exhaust port here. And what's going to happen is the piston's going to continue going down and it's actually going to uncover the air inlet port here on the left hand side and the air is going to rush into the combustion space or rush into the cylinder liner and it's actually going to displace the exhaust gas. The reason it's going to do this is because as this piston is coming down, the air in this space is being compressed. So you can imagine the piston's coming down, it's compressing the air here and it's forcing it out this way into the combustion chamber. Also notice at the same time we've got the air valve here which is closed, so you're not drawing any more air into this space, the air is being discharged into the combustion space only. And now we're going to reach bottom dead center. And as you can see, bottom dead center, we're now covering up the air inlet port. And we covered up the exhaust port. Now these two are covered. And the bottom valve here, the reed valve, is open. So we're filling air back up into this space. Remember, we compressed the air, we forced it out. So now it's not empty and it's probably not under vacuum but the pressure here is lower but you're drawing air back in, it's replenishing the air here and in this channel or in this port 
and we're going through the same cycle again. Again, compression, ignition, expansion, and there, exhaust port is uncovered. Inlet port, or the charge air port, is also uncovered. Now the air is going to displace the exhaust gas. Important to realize here, though, that the air is displacing the exhaust gas in the combustion space, but it's also flowing out of the exhaust port. And that's one of the reasons why the engine is not particularly efficient. You're actually wasting air. You're, you're forcing air out as well as exhaust air. Ideally, you would actually want to bring as much air in to displace all of the exhaust gas possible without losing any air, but that's not possible. So the air's coming in, you're displacing most of the exhaust gas, but not all of it. And that's one of the reasons why the engine is not so efficient compared to a four stroke. And if we carry on just down here for a moment, just to finish our cycle, compress the air here, the air is rushing out into this area. Now we're going back up again, shut the inlet port, shut the exhaust gas port, ignition, compression, expansion. And that is essentially how the whole two stroke engine works, at least a small two stroke engine. I say small because ship engines, which are the largest engines in the world, they don't work like this. They actually they have a similar principle, but the scavenging principle is totally different, which is good because this scavenging principle, when I say scavenge, scavenge is where you draw air into the combustion space and discharge it through the exhaust gas port. That whole process is called scavenging. If you're drawing air into the combustion space, and only drawing air in. If you're just talking about that, you call that charging. So this would be called charge air, but the process of re replenishing the air within the combustion space is known as scavenging. So now we've learned about the components or a few of the components and how it works. Let's have a look at some of the other features that make this engine quite unique. Well, first you can see here on the top, these fins. Anytime you see fins like this, especially if they're made of metal, they're usually acting as heat exchangers. And the reason they're shaped like this is because they have a large cross-sectional area, which means they can transfer a lot more heat than if they were just flat. So the idea in, with these fins, these cooling fins, is that you can transfer a lot of heat quickly. And this helps keep the engine cool. You'll also see these fins on things like battery inverters or transformers and things like that. The spark plug on the top, which we're going to do a separate video about at another date. We do have the model on the website. What else have we got here? You can see that the actual design is incredibly simple. So we managed to talk our way through it a lot quicker than we did with the four stroke engine. And one of the reasons this engine's favored is because it has a high power to weight ratio. Remember we said earlier that the engine's not very efficient in comparison to a four stroke engine. And this is true but it does have a very high power to weight ratio. The reason it has a high power to weight ratio is because it doesn't have many of the parts that the two stroke engine has. For example, there are no valves. There's no inlet and discharge valves. There are also no push rods. There's no camshaft. A lot of the components you would need for timing in a four stroke engine, you don't need for the two stroke engine. And again, all these parts, they add weight. And two stroke engine doesn't have any of those, so it has a very high power to weight ratio. If you get a chance, go to the website, have a look at the introduction. I've uploaded a bit of text to explain exactly how the two stroke cycle engine works. And there's also obviously the animated model and a short section on the right here concerning scavenging, which will be our next video. All of this combined should help you really get a better understanding of how the two-stroke engine works and what the differences are between a two-stroke and a four-stroke engine. If you want to help us out, please do support us on Patreon or Facebook. You can share or like the video or if you want, just follow us on Twitter. Any of those things will really help us. Thank you very much for your time.